Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSC and WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Jody Slick, founder and CEO of Equilibrium 3. Jody has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. Thank you, Jody, for joining us today. Glad to be here. Equilibrium 3 is a very interesting organization. You're organizing communities, you're providing voice, you're, you're trying to figure out how to take positions that strengthen civil society here in Duluth. Talk about the founding of, e of Equilibrium 3 and the work that you do on a daily basis. Sure, Equilibrium 3 is actually a spin-off organization of another social enterprise that I started back in 2004 called Common Ground. Um, and Common Ground worked on green affordable housing construction as well as training low-income people and those that uh, were currently in prison in the trades so that we could advance some housing solutions in this community. But what we found is, is that just taking kind of a, a silver bullet approach to some of our most complex problems uh, isn't necessarily going to get us where we need to be and the type of impact we want. And so um, when there was a merger of some nonprofits, we actually spun out about half of our staff half of our board uh, to create Equilibrium 3, really to operate at the intersection of energy, equity, and economic vitality, and take multiple approaches um, simultaneously uh, to addressing our most difficult problems. So that's a very interesting process that you go through. You, you build an organization, you do it laboriously, and then you reach a conclusion that really, by spinning off, by having your staff uh, become integrated into other uh, organizations, those organizations can take that part of what you do mm -hmm. and do it just as effectively or more effectively yep. than you can. And then you take a look at where the gap is mm -hmm. and you're gonna fill that gap again. So you start an organization to fill a gap and then when you see other gaps emerge, you move into another gap filling role. So what what caused you to, to identify a gap? I mean, it's it, 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 there's certain things that you're seeing where you see a need that is not going to be addressed if left unattended. Yeah, I, I call it the messy middle. Um, and I think that throughout our, our community, throughout the nonprofit um, world, we see that there are a lot of conversations that are held and the problem seems so big and so um, intractable that we, we all have our theory of change. If we do this, something will happen, but problems are much more complex than that. And what we found with the people we were working with uh, was that, that we actually had a really strong team of people that could kind of swoop in and figure out what the lever was or the nudge was to make something happen. And that didn't mean that we needed to create our own programs. Sometimes that's about building capacity of other organizations. Sometimes that's helping kind of cross-sector partners Sometimes better define a problem. Sometimes framing, it's framing the problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Framing the issue, because very often it's not, it's not within our capacity to really get to the core, yeah. right, in, in a very short period of time. That sometimes takes time, and, and time requires um, uh, discussion, debate, disagreement, mm -hmm. mixing it up a little bit. Yep. Uh, but I think it, one thing that, that we've found is that it also very much takes a lens of get something done. And I think that that's really, um, we approach uh, our community, whether it's the Lincoln Park neighborhood where we've been working on revitalization for the last decade, um, or energy transition and working on, on helping people out of energy poverty. We look at um, all of those types of issues really through both a design thinking and a systems thinking lens. You know, start by really understanding um, from the person's or the household's point of view what their barriers are. Instead of just kind of projecting that we've got solutions, let's, let's really understand um, from, from the individual point of view. Um, let's think, let's listen, let's iterate, and let's try something because it's only when we're actually doing something, doing that project, helping somebody with their home, um, getting people together to discuss um, issues that we actually move forward. So your value add isn't that you can write a check. Your expertise is in systems thinking, yep. is in this design, this idea of designing solutions. You actually function as a facilitator. You don't even come with the in-depth knowledge of the community that people who are in the community uh, possess themselves. You're you're going to help. I mean, you have some of that knowledge, yeah. but you're going to help through this the the through the way you interact 
to create ideas for solutions. Yeah, and it, we really do work on that design and systems thinking point of view. It's something that we've worked across multiple domains. And so, for example, uh, Equilibrium 3 is uh, working right now on, on demonstrating some innovative housing uh, techniques that hopefully will make housing more affordable in our community. At the same time, we're working in community on things like um, blight reduction. We've formed some great partnerships with the University of Minnesota Duluth uh, to look at um, the data that we really need to understand the fact that people in our neighborhood have a 14-year uh, longevity gap. You know, we're, we, I think, serve in this, this really interesting place in which we've got credibility, honestly, with the person that's standing across the street at 9 a.m. waiting for a bar to open, you know, uh, uh, all the way up to, to federal agencies. And how can we kind of serve as that weaver um, between what the challenges are and the, the very kind of small parts of solutions that lots of different people can bring to the table. Talk a little bit about how you put together teams that, that advance these ideas. Yeah, so Equilibrium 3 uh, actually only has four full-time staff members, mm -hmm. uh, but one thing that we have learned over the years is we need a heck of a lot more capacity. And if we can figure out how to get good people working on problems in our community with other good people, solutions will emerge. And so one thing that we ended up doing is launching an AmeriCorps VISTA program, uh, which has 16 members right now and actually will be expanding to, to 24 this summer. And what that is, is that's actually bringing in 24 full-time community service volunteers that are giving a year of their time, uh, actually working at poverty wages uh, to increase the capacity of our organizations. And through uh, that time, type of running um, a, a VISTA program, we're able to have volunteers that are working with the public health on opioids, working with the tribe on food sovereignty, uh, working with the Children's Museum on STEM access for low-income children, uh, working on energy poverty, et cetera. And so that's a, a, a place in which we use our capacity and the relationships that, that we've been able to garner over the years with the federal government uh, to bring a considerable um, amount of resources into our community, not just for the work Equilibrium 3 does, uh, but to really kind of help the entire community and multiple organizations do better. Another example would be um, that we recognize in this community one of the challenges we have uh, towards uh, housing is the lack of people in the trades. And we have workforce groups that are working on that. We have um, the trade organizations that are working on that. But we keep hearing in community that some of the frustration is, is that it actually goes all the way down to our middle school kids and whether or not the, the, the trades or kind of the blue collar STEM is something that they're interested in. Well, there's nobody that's necessarily um, an organization working in that particular area, but we know in our neighborhood um, that's an opportunity for us to, to show and highlight um, the blue collar STEM that already occurs. And so we're um, working with uh, everything from the school district to trade organizations to the university um, uh, for an informal STEM learning uh, process that can do some creative place making in Lincoln Park um, by actually helping to turn the neighborhood into a kind of a walking science museum, but at the same time highlighting the amazing jobs that this neighborhood uh, has, whether they be from the port or brewers that use chemistry um, to bakers to our HVAC guys, um, and hopefully uh, put a little kind of um, nudge in there um, specifically to help kids and their identity so that a decade from now um, maybe we have a, a, a deeper pool of those that are working in the trades to get to our affordable housing issue. Now when you are involved in a process that grabs attention and that, and that starts to create a focus and then eventually creates actionable ideas and then take action there are going to be people who don't want that focus to be taken from their priorities. There are going to be people who feel that you coming into their neighborhoods or dealing with issues that they have, that, there's, that, that it could be a little paternalistic. Um, there could be resistance from within or resistance from without. There can be opposition. Talk about your experience of that type of a dynamic and how you navigate that. Yeah, so 
I think one way in which we navigate that is is we try to um, kind of fully understand what the landscape is or the ecosystem that we're dealing with. Um, and we try not to portray ourselves as something that we're not. So when we do work in Lincoln Park, we're a community-based organization there. That is our neighborhood. That's our heart. Um, and we can interact in that neighborhood with the residents much different than if we're just looking at some sort of programmatic solution for energy um, that would would happen kind of throughout the community. And so always kind of knowing what is authentic um, as you're working with people is, is very important. And then I think the other thing is, is that um, we do not necessarily as an organization move into a space because we think we are the solution. Um, so for example, we don't necessarily think we need to start a program or this is where our earned income will come from or this is a, a new opportunity for us. We first go into that space and work on trying to figure out how we can solve the community problem. And oftentimes that might be by building the capacity of somebody that's already in that space and kind of approaching from a, from a give instead of a, a take um, situation. And then if it, it, it ends up kind of in that space, that there isn't um, an organization that can kind of take that, that emergent need and move it forward, then we work with those partners and, and funders to say, okay, this might be something we can take in-house. Uh, wonderful, Jody Schlick, founder and CEO of Equilibrium 3. Thank you so much for sharing the work of this amazing organization in Duluth, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.